in the field of physiology. It was 600 years after the Quran was revealed that Ibn Nafis described the blood circulation. And 400 years after Ibn Nafis, that is 1000 years after the Quran was revealed, William Harvey made it famous to the world. We read in the textbook in school that William Harvey was the first person who described the blood circulation. Actually, 400 years before, it was Ibn Nafis. And 600 years before that, Quran has described in a nutshell. Today, after science advance, we have come to know, just to say in brief, the food we eat, it goes into the stomach. From the stomach, it enters the intestine. From the intestine, through the blood vessels of the intestine, it enters into the bloodstream and goes to almost all the organs via complex media, many a time via the liver. It reaches all the different organs of the body, including the mammary glands, which is responsible for the production of milk. This, what science has come to know today, is mentioned in a nutshell. The production of milk and the blood circulation in the Quran, in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 66, it says, Verily, in the cattle is a lesson for you. We give you to drink from what is within the body coming from a conjunction between the constituents of the intestine and blood. Milk, which is pure for you to have. The same message repeated in Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 21, that verily in the cattle is a lesson for you. We give you to drink from what is within the body. Milk, which is pure for you and good for you. And in the cattle, there are numerous benefits. There are numerous benefits. And of the meat you can eat, Who could have mentioned all these things in the Quran 14 years ago? In the field of embryology, there were a group of Arab students about 30 years back who followed the advice of the Quran, which says, First Allu Ahl is Zikri in Kundula Talamu. In Surah Nahal, chapter 16, verse 43, and Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 7, which says that if you are in doubt, ask the person who is knowledgeable. So they collected all the material and all the data given in the Quran and the authentic hadith dealing with embryology and they presented it to Professor Keith Moore. At that time, in the early 1980s and the late 1970s, Professor Keith Moore was one of the highest authorities in the field of embryology. He was head of the Department of Anatomy in the University of Toronto in Canada. And they translated all these verses of the Quran and the hadith and presented it to him and asked him for his comments. He said that most of the things mentioned in the Quran are in perfect conformity with modern embryology. But there are a few things which I cannot say that they are right. Neither can I say they are wrong because I myself don't know about it. And one, one such thing is the first two verses of the Quran. Surah Ikra, Surah Alaq, chapter 96, verse number 1 and 2, which says, Ikra bismi rabbika allazi khalaq. Read, recite, proclaim in the name of thy Lord who created. Who created the human beings from something which clings, a leech-like substance. So Prophet Keith Moore said, I do not know whether the embryo in the initial stages looks like a leech or not. So he went into the laboratory and under a very powerful microscope observed the early stages of an embryology, the early stages of an embryo and compared it with a photograph of a leech. And he was astonished at the striking resemblance. And later on, when our Ritti question was asked to him regarding embryology from Quran and Hadith, he told him, it's an early part of 1980s, about 30 years back, he said that if you would have asked me these questions 30 years before, I would not be able to answer more than 50% because embryology is a branch of medicine which I developed recently. And he said, I have got no objection in agreeing that this book is divine and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. The Quran says in Surah Tariq, chapter 86, verse number 5 to 7, does not man think from what is created? Does not man know from what is created? He is created from a drop, emitted from a space between the backbone and the ribs. What does the Quran mean by saying that human beings have been created from a drop emitted between the backbone and the ribs? 
Today, after science has advanced, and in biology, the advanced we have come to know that the genital organs in the human beings, the testicles in the males and the ovaries in the females, in the embryonic life, when the child is in the womb of the mother, it originates from a space from where the kidney is present, between the backbones and the 11th and 12th rib. Later on, it descends down. In the female, the ovary goes to the true pelvis. And in the male, it descends down lower through the inguinal canal into the scrotum. But even in the adult life, after the ovaries and testicles have descended yet, they receive the blood supply and the nerve supply from the same space from where the kidney is present between the backbone and the 11th and 12th rib. The blood supply comes from the aorta, which is present between the backbone and the 11th and 12th rib. And even the venous return and the lymphatic drainage goes back to the same area between the backbone and the 11th and 12th rib. Quran says in Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 13, as well as Surah Hajj, chapter 22, verse number 5. We have created the human beings from a nutfa. A nutfa means a minute quantity of liquid, a very small quantity. The Quran says in Surah Sajda, chapter number 32, verse number 8, we have created the human beings from Sulala. Sulala means the best part of the whole. Today, science tells us, in one emission normally, in one ejaculation, a normal man emits about 300 million sperms. And out of 300 million sperms, only one is sufficient to fertilize the ova. This minute quantity is called as a nutfa. It is, it is even called as solala, the best part of the whole. One out of 300 million sperms, the Quran refers to as solala, the best part of the whole. The Quran further says in Surah Insan, chapter 76, verse number 2, that we have created the human being from Nutfadin Amshaj, a mingled quantity, a minute quantity of mingled fluids. Today, science tells us, that both the fluids are required, the male and the female. The spermatozoa as well as ovum is required. And besides that, the other fluids secreted from the testicles, from the seminal vesicle, from the prostatic glands, from the glands of the ureter, all these fluids also help in the production of the child. Quran says a minute quantity of mingled fluid. In the field of genetics, today science tells us, that the 23rd pair of chromosomes is responsible 